My name is Marion Collier. I played Olga, the clarinet player. And I played Mary Lou, a trumpet player, and enjoyed myself tremendously with our group right here. I'm Sandra Warner. I played Emily in the film. Some Like It Hot was the greatest film ever made. I was very happy to be a part of it. And I'm Joan Nicholas. Um, my character was Betty, and I played the saxophone. Oh my God, I've got to have this picture. Oh my God. That's me with the martini mixer. This You're one I've seen. I've never seen this I've one. I've seen this one because because I was trying to get in it with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, oh. oh, look at this. Oh, you know, most of us uh, didn't have blonde hair. And half the girls had to dye their hair blonde. I was a brunette when I was I know, hired. you came in. And Billy Wilder said to me, you look much better as a blonde. So <laughs> and in fact, the man didn't like it. And my hair was not pure, pure blonde. You were red, weren't you? I was kind of honey blonde. And the, the uh, casting director, Phil Benjamin, didn't like that at all. Uh, we had to color our hair a certain blonde because Marilyn had this very platinum color. Yeah, very so platinum. We had to stay away, stay from, away from her color. Yeah. yeah. But Marilyn Monroe was magic. She really lit up the screen. You couldn't take your eyes off of her. No, she was. And every guy wanted to take her home in his pocket. <laughs> she was absolutely adorable because she had a quality of sexiness mixed with innocence. And yeah, if you go life. back in time and see oh. early movies, if you see Jean Harlow or Jane Russell or um, Rita Hayworth or Lana Turner, they all had a tremendous amount of sex appeal. But what Marilyn had was that little extra pinch of salt when she mixed sensuality with innocence. And it's a very rare quality. It's, it's magic time. Good night, sugar! Good night, honey! Marilyn was smart. And she was smart in a way that she had a drama coach, she had a choreographer, she had an agent, she had a manager, and she was smart enough to listen to them. So when she was told what to do, when to do, how to do, why to do, if to do, she followed their instructions and became a great success. I did a couple of things with her and Tony. I did one scene and running in and out with the ice, ice, the natives are getting restless, the scene with the symbol and all this. So I, it was a day when the girls weren't shooting, I had to be there. And I used to sit there and just watch. Watch. I didn't say it. I just sat there. And I sat there all day, even though I was finished. I would sit there and I would watch. And, and she was she was magic. She really was. But there were days that Marilyn didn't show up. And of exactly. course, when Marilyn didn't show up, we were still on payroll. Right. But one day, Marilyn was there, but she wouldn't come out of her dressing room. So Billy Wilder came over to me and he said, Sandra, you're a singer. I want you to get on the stage get to the microphone, I'm going to put the playback on low. Of course, the song Running Wild was on, Marilyn was singing it. And he said, if Marilyn hears your voice instead of hers, she'll come out of her <laughs> dressing room. So they put the playback on, and Running Wild does control, blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, she came out. Marilyn came out of her dressing room, and she walked to the stage, and she looked at Billy, and Billy said, from the top, Running wild, lost control. Running wild, mighty bold. Feeling gay, reckless too. Can't remind all the time, never blue. Always go. And she was great. But you really had to persuade her. And I think Billy Wilder was a genius in persuading people to do just the right thing without offending them. Now, now, now she's going to drop the booze. Watch, the booze is going to fall out. See? Yep. I told you. Well, you remember that? I remember the whole thing. I remember every line Look in how pretty film. she looked there. She was beautiful. She she Marilyn Monroe was dynamite. She, she was beautiful. There's she Beanstalk. <laughs> Dave Barry. <laughs> Sandy, there'll never be a face like that again. I Such magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to throw sugar off the train. But then you know with what's going to happen. With those glasses. Mary. Mary's in the back. Yeah, there's Mary. 
And he's going to say, now, I told you girls no drink. I told you, sugar. I warned you for the last time. No drinking. And then Jack Clemens says, excuse me, that's my glass. <laughs> <laughs> Your glass? Yes, just a little bourbon. Must have uh, slipped through. <laughs> well, I was surprised that Jack Lemon decided to have a career as an actor because uh, wasn't he a Harvard graduate? I mean, he he, he was, was an actor before he came to Hollywood. He, though. he did the uh, theater. theater. He was he was such a scholar. That he knows a great deal about jazz, about mm -hmm. acting, about theater, no. about history. I mean, this man is so. I really didn't know who he was. Uh, Interesting. I didn't know who he was. Did you before he came? I mean, did no. you see him before? He had done something. Something, but, but was I, on, he was on Broadway. He was on. A, he was. I knew. Yes, yeah, I didn't yes, know who he was. This is a private party. Will you please go away? I you put some cheese and crackers in case anybody gets hungry. What is this? Can't come be enough party for two. Two. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, he was such a good sport. And I had the the. Uh, the amount of, I don't know how many boxes of crackers oh, yeah. to shove into Jack Clemens' mouth over and over. And by, it, by the, <laughs> the end of the, the day, it was like, okay. So um, his mouth was like numb. And I was the one with the, remember the martini, here's the martini shaker with the uh, hot water bottle. And I'd get out of there by the end of the day. I was like crippled. I couldn't walk. We were that crunched. I don't know how many takes we had to do, but... We were hysterical, just laughing all the time. Hey, mm. have you got any maraschino cherries on you? Mm. Oh, never mind. That's a great picture of Tony. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> adorable. I didn't, even, I didn't even know he was there. You thought he was another girl. <laughs> <laughs> that? That's hysterical. When, uh, when we were shooting, they had an uh, interview, and someone said, if you girls want to go for this, it's a commercial, and it was a commercial, a commercial. If you girls want to go for this interview, Go ahead, you know, you, you've got an hour off or two hours. We've got to wait till Marilyn gets her makeup on or something. So we all went, all of us, or whoever wanted to go. We went up for this interview. And guess who got it? Tony. Because <laughs> he was in his, in his late oh, girls. Girl. I mean, he, was, he was the prettiest one, let's face it. Tony was beautiful. I swear. They he said, was. Okay. He was great as a gal. Yeah. yeah. He, he was very Tony got it, not us. <laughs> then he finally said, look, I'm not a girl. I had to tell but we had a great time, and next door they were shooting, when we were doing something like that, they were shooting Porgy and Bess. Right, 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 And everybody right. would come on the set, like Harry Belafonte would come on. And Sammy Davis came. And Sammy was always there, Sammy Davis, and Sidney Poitier. Wonderful. They and just, they all would come to the Something Like a Hot set, because I guess they heard that there were 15 women there, 15 girls, or and, whatever, and, and probably see Marilyn and Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was such a great lot. It was small. Yeah. And it, it was just, it was just fun. That's a great sound. Look at oh, this. God. Oh, look at that. Look at the bowling. <laughs> Tony did. Tony looks, look at that. Oh. Mel and I were very round. I was a little taller than her, but I fit into her wardrobe. And because she was pregnant, um, I was asked to do her publicity stills. And most of the albums, or wherever you see Marilyn Monroe, Jack Lemmon, and Tony Curtis, they would use my body and Marilyn's face. And it worked out perfectly. I mean, it, it couldn't have been better, and I enjoyed doing it. And of course, spending the whole day with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis doing stills like this was a laugh a minute. You know, it's a wonder we got anything accomplished. <laughs> and we kept listening to the playback while we, while we did these photographs. Oh, did you? Well, to keep in the mood, you, you know. You had to do it. Isn't that amazing? And you fit right into her dress. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from Billy Wilder. Mobile. The patience uh, he had and his direction. Brilliant. I used to watch him all day. We all did. We well, all you know, did. Billy would stand there. And as everyone, I don't care if it was my line or, or, or Laurie's line, anybody, he, he repeated, I mean, he didn't, not out loud, but he knew every line. Because mm -hmm. I, I would look at him and I'd be saying my line, he'd be going, <laughs> <laughs> he knew every single line. And he did all of Marilyn's, Tony's, Jack's, everybody, everybody's. In his direction, he just, the rubber bands stretch far beyond anyone's imagination as far as his talent was concerned. And he had a tremendous amount of patience. He was really remarkable. Just priceless. Oh. Just what a talent. There'll never be another director like that. Never. I look at Joan. She was great. Just 
She was so deadpan. So perfect. Hey, Sheboygan, you too. What was your last job, playing square dances? Joan Shawley was honestly Funny. one of the nicest ladies you will ever meet. She was wonderful and so talented and funny. Funny. I mean, not only on camera. She was she was funny or off camera. Honestly, she was just great. She had a great sense of humor. Uh, she just was wonderful. I just was sorry that she passed away, but she when she did, she was you know, quite young. And, was, and then it, it, I think she. I think I tell you, I think she really made that part of, of, of the picture. I mean, without her, I don't think, I don't know who else could have played Sweet Sue as no, well as I don't Joan, either. do you? Yeah, no. I really don't She was know. perfect. She was so perfect for Sweet Sue. All right, girls, let's take it from the top. And put a little heat under it. Some Like It Hot was like the greatest souffle ever made. It had the perfect ingredients. It had the greatest script, mm -hmm. a great director, a great cast, of course, the greatest chef was Billy Wilder, but it really was like the greatest souffle ever made in history. It's well written, it's well directed, it's well acted, it's well cast. Uh, the, camera, the camera work was fantastic. I mean, yes. the cinematographer yes. was sensational. Charles Lang, his name was. I mean, it, it's everything. It Didn't. was funny, it was a comedy. Comedy is the hardest type of writing there is, and to, and to make it come off the way Billy Wilder and I.A.L. Di Diamond did. Uh, it was fantastic.